Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Auto. So I thought I'd make this video on how long does a battery last in an electric vehicle? So this is the first mass produced EV in the UK. Uh, this one's actually a Peugeot Ion, but the original um, is a Mitsubishi iMove, but it's all the same car. This is actually a Mitsubishi. It's just got a Peugeot badge on it. They're all made by Mitsubishi in Japan. So these cars came to the UK in 2010 and they were the first mass produced proper factory made EVs with lithium ion battery packs. So there were electric cars before that, but many of these were um, conversion vehicles or limited run vehicles with um, previous battery technologies. When these cars came out there was this worry about the life of the battery pack and there was lots of horror stories in the press that batteries are only going to last four years or so and at the time they were hugely expensive. This car when it was launched in the UK was actually £38,500 which is an awful lot of money for a very small city hatchback and when the original Nissan Leaf launched in 2011 or 12 and the Renault Zoe in 2013 again the worries about the life of the battery pack were um, stopping them selling and uh, so both Nissan and Renault bought in battery lease and that meant you bought the vehicle but rented the battery pack and that did two things it brought the price down but it also took away people's worries because Renault, in this case, took the responsibility of the battery pack as you were only hired. So we're now 10 years on from these earlier um, EVs and the manufacturers now on the new cars no longer offer battery lease. So the new Renault Zoe ZE50 uh, that comes out uh, this summer in 2020 no longer has the option to lease the batteries. They're all battery owned only and also the prices of the batteries have dropped hugely and, and uh, new EVs now are almost on price parity with the equivalent petrol or diesel vehicle. However, even now when people come to look at an EV, often their first question is still how long does that battery last and what does it cost to replace? So let's look at a few examples. I used to drive a Renault Zoe, I sold it about six months ago, so it's a 2013 22 kilowatt hour battery pack and it had done 50 6,000 miles and at the time when I sold it the battery was still at 96% state of health so in those six and a half years and 56,000 miles it had only lost 4% state of health. Our other car we own is a BMW i3 it's a 60 amp hour range extender and that has done a huge 124,500 miles. On those, you can't actually measure the battery state of health. Um, however, the range is still as good as a new one. There's no loss at all, or no noticeable loss, and we're still getting the same range per charge as uh, any other i3 of that size battery. And here's my other EV. This is a Hyundai Ioniq. It's uh, a 2017, so it's just coming up to uh, three years old, and this has done 72,000 miles. And if I scan the battery here with my scanner, this is scanning the real-time data feed from the battery. Not all cars report the battery state of health, but I know on this ION it does. So if I get down here to where it's reporting the real-time state of health of the battery, It's somewhere here. State of health, 100%. So even after doing 72,000 miles, the battery hasn't lost any of its capacity. So typically, an EV battery will degrade about 1% a year. Well, somewhere between 1% and 2%. That does depend on the make and model of car because it depends on primarily the systems in the car that look after the battery. So that's the active thermal management. So um, some cars have heaters in the battery. Uh, some cars have cooling, water cooling or forced air cooling from the air conditioning. And some other cars don't have uh, any thermal management at all and rely on the air blowing underneath the car when you're driving. 
So those cars, typically are Nissans, um, they will often uh, see battery degradation more like 2% a year, whereas other cars like, for example, a Renault that has forced air cooling, it will be more like 1%. However, as you've seen on this example with this Ionic, this has done 72,000 miles in three years, yet there's no measurable battery degradation at all yet. And that is because it's done a lot of miles. So we're all used to normal cars that uh, a high mileage car uh, is worth less because the value of the car is very much dictated on the mileage because mileage means wear and tear, more bills and less life in that vehicle. However, it's very different with an electric vehicle because actually Battery packs on high mileage cars, for example, like this and our BMW, um, are actually better than battery packs on low mileage cars. And that's because um, batteries like to be cycled and used. And a, a car with a, a low mileage is that car's often sat, not being used for long periods of time, with the battery at 100%. And that's when most battery degradation will happen. It's when you charge the battery to 100% and then leave it. And that's typically what happens with uh, low mileage vehicles. They get charged overnight on the charger. They don't get used for a few days and the battery is sitting there at 100%. And that's when the battery degradation will happen. Whereas a car like this, that's clearly been used a lot and obviously used every day, it's never been sat fully charged for very long. So this battery hasn't degraded. Yet if one of these came along same age and it done 5,000 miles, you could almost be guaranteed that battery would be in a slightly poorer state than this one. But of course people haven't really appreciated this yet. And uh, EVs are just like normal cars. Um, the price of them uh, is very much based on the year and the mileage. So there's always going to be the odd example where a battery might degrade at a high amount or might have a failure and need repairing or replacing, but we're talking generally here. And manufacturers know that as well. So the Nissan Leaf had a five year uh, warranty on its battery pack um, and they've been around since 2011. But the, the BMW has an eight year warranty on its battery pack and the new Nissan Leaf, the 40 kilowatt hour here, has got an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty on its battery pack. And that I think is to 75% of its capacity is typically what it is with most manufacturers. So um, they're expecting a battery pack to not degrade as much as that in eight years or 100,000 miles. Personally, I think it's quite unlikely that uh, anyone would ever be changing a battery pack in a car because typically that battery pack will last the life of the vehicle. Even if a battery pack's degrading 2% a year, it's likely that that battery pack will still be completely usable for the life of the vehicle. And vehicles typically last uh, somewhere between 10 and 20 years. And what happens with vehicles is usually something will break on them that makes it uh, too expensive to repair. Um, and that repair ends up costing more than the vehicle's worth. So it might be a gearbox goes or a turbo or a particulate filter. And you get a bill for one and a half, two grand, something like that. And it's just not worth repairing and the car ends up being scrapped. And I think that would be exactly the same with EVs. Um, however, I don't think it will be the battery packs. But some cars have very small batteries, like these Peugeot IONS. These have got the smallest battery of any EV. And of course, they start with a relatively limited range. These do about 70 miles. And if your battery's lost, say, 10% capacity, um, the range, therefore, might be too limited for what uh, you need it for. Uh, but it doesn't mean the battery needs replacing. You, maybe it's just got to find a new owner that does less miles. That battery is still going to have a lot of life left in it. So I hope that video helps. And maybe you're watching this because you're looking to buy your first EV and you were concerned about the life of battery packs. But of course, you can always buy EVs with rented battery packs where you buy the vehicle, but then you rent that battery pack and therefore it's someone else's responsibility. If you like the video, please do click the little thumbs up icon on YouTube because that allows other people to find the video. And maybe subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get a notification if I upload a new video.